Last year, I had a conversation with a Dutch friend about the two impending New Zealand flag referendums. During the conversation, I showed him our flag on my phone, and he responded with, I thought that was Australia's flag. I thought to myself that it's a good thing that the Dutch flag doesn't resemble any other national flags, as that would make the situation very embarrassing for him. But yes, the New Zealand flag does look a lot like the Australian flag, and that's one reason why New Zealand ran these referendums. But even if our flag is not particularly recognisable, there is one image that people associate with New Zealand. It's this. And if there's a second, it's the silver fern, which was used on the alternative flag design. Results of the second referendum indicate that New Zealand has retained its previous flag. But maybe New Zealand should have changed. Let's have a closer look at what happened. Since New Zealand's first overseas deployment in the Boer War, where the fern was used to differentiate New Zealand troops from the other Commonwealth nations present, the silver fern has been a symbol of New Zealand, just as the maple leaf has been for Canada. In 1956, the silver fern was added to the coat of arms, as well as the motto being changed from onwards to New Zealand. Apparently we were already worried about being confused for another nation. But in modern times, it is with our sports teams that the silver fern has gained popularity as a national symbol. New Zealand's national netball team is literally named the Silver Ferns, but it is the All Blacks silver fern that is an icon recognised as a symbol of New Zealand. The fern is so associated with the All Blacks that New Zealand Rugby attempted to trademark any version of a silver fern on a black jersey in 2005. Fortunately the courts rejected this, however the All Blacks specific design is protected, and the New Zealand Rugby Football Union were unwilling to hand over their trademark to the Crown in order to make it our flag. And neither should they. The All Blacks brand is a valuable asset and earns the sport significant income each year, and ultimately New Zealanders don't really want to deny their national sport of this funding. In the current debate, a silver fern on a black flag was compared to the flag of the Islamic State by the head of the Flag Society of Australia. Bloody Aussies messing up everything. However, this is not an unreasonable concern, as after the death of Kiwi rugby legend Jonah Lomu, a fan flying the All Blacks fern in Italy resulted in dozens of calls to police from concerned members of the public that mistook it for the ISIS flag. Now we don't want to be confused with terrorists, but I'd like to think that as the only nation with a primarily black flag, the silver fern on black would only become more iconic and recognisable as a symbol of New Zealand. But with its strong link to sport, and now a correlation with ISIS, the fern on black fell out of favour. So if a new flag was to feature a fern, a new fern needed to be found. Step back to 2003, when a man named Kyle Lockwood published an alternative flag design. And in 2004, that flag won a newspaper design competition. And a year later, followed up by topping a major current affairs program's viewers poll that included the current flag. And ever since, this design has been a major contender as an alternative flag put forward by groups aiming to change the flag. In 2014, these lobbyists got their wish, with the incumbent Prime Minister and leader of the National Party making an election pledge to hold a vote on changing New Zealand's flag. Following National's re-election, the wheels were put in motion for these referendums to take place. In what was touted as an America's Cup approach to choosing the nation's flag, two referendums would take place. The first to choose the challenger, and the second where that challenger would go head to head with the current flag. And right from this point criticism began. The Royal New Zealand Returned and Services Association, backed by the populist political party New Zealand First, launched the Fight for the Flag campaign, aiming to reverse the question order and ask first if New Zealanders wanted to change their flag at all. Of course many Kiwis would only want to change their flag if there was a good alternative on offer, and so the order stuck. There was also criticism of the $26 million price tag, 4 million of which was spent on communication and engagement. But with fewer than 10 people attending the first public meeting in Christchurch, New Zealand's second largest city, the process was admittedly off to a rocky start. The process began with an open submission of alternative designs. Anyone was allowed to submit an idea. And the results were, well, inspired. This isn't a bad thing. If you allow anyone to submit an idea, you are going to get some submissions that are less serious. But you'll also get an abundance of good designs as well. And at the very least, the more, shall we say, comedic designs got people talking and aware of the process. From just over 10,000 submissions, the 12 person flag consideration panel, made up of respected New Zealanders with representative age, regional, gender, and ethnic demographics, reduced that number down to the long list of 40 designs that would be reviewed in more detail. One of those designs was removed based on copyright issues. And from the remaining 39 designs, the committee chose four to continue to be put forward to public vote at the first of the two referendums. 
Only one of the flags did not contain a silver fern, and two of the fern designs were simply a colour swap of the same layout, and any Kiwis who did prefer the fern on black approach wouldn't find what they were after. Many felt that the process had been rushed, and that the committee had not really listened to the public. Reports soon surfaced that the panel didn't consult the advice of any vexiologists. Instead, they relied on the advice of a Nike shoe designer who previously designed washing machines. To make matters worse, the panel came under fire as a member had an undeclared conflict of interest, with her position in promoting the fern imagery. Disenfranchised voters rallied around the red peak flag, and a bill to add this flag to the ballot was put forward by the Green Party. Parliament went into extraordinary urgency to pass this legislation. So these five flags went to the voters, to pick a challenger flag to take on the incumbent at a second referendum. For election geeks, and if you're watching explainer videos on YouTube, there's a good chance you are one, this first referendum was a fascinating affair. This referendum made use of instant runoff voting, where voters ranked their preferences and the least most popular choice is eliminated at each iteration. And voters who had that choice have their votes transferred to the next available preference until one option has 50% of the votes. It took to the fourth and final iteration to determine a winner, and this eventual winner was actually the second most popular choice, based on first preferences. The winning design would go on to challenge the flag New Zealand has had officially since 1902. These referendums have been a triumph for democracy. New Zealanders did get a democratic choice, but while it has been a great electoral process, this has not been a great design one. They say never design something by committee. They compromise, and the results are less simplistic. They are, essentially, worse designs. But democratic processes also involve that element of compromise. The two referendums looked good on paper, but getting a few million people to agree on a design challenge is not an easy task. In the eyes of many, this process has not been executed particularly well. Not having designers on the flag consideration panel was a huge oversight. The late inclusion of the red peak flag was a comical affair, and the limited options on the ballot didn't give citizens the feeling that they could express themselves. Polling suggests that 20% of voters in principle agree with flag change, but do not approve the design offered. And these voters proved decisive in this referendum, with the nation returning a result of keeping the Union Jack design. I think New Zealanders do want to change their flag, but as of yet we haven't found a suitable alternative. For my recent Q&A video, link on the card by the way, I was asked about my own views regarding the flag referendums. It's probably fairly clear from what I've just said that I would favour a silver fern on a black flag, but given the choices I had, I voted for the red, white and blue fern first, the black and white fern second, the eventual winner third, red peak fourth, leaving the Koro in last place. To be fair, I don't particularly like any of them, although in the long list of 40 flags, there were a couple that I would have voted for over the current flag, but with the version that was on offer, my vote went to the incumbent.